All right, thanks a lot, Beth. As Arizona will receive after winning the toss here on senior night in Tucson. They'll start off first and 10 from their own 25 yard line as we go back to Khalil Tate. Talked about his last five games rushing for over a thousand yards with nine rushing touchdowns. Tate 6 2 out of Inglewood, California. That homecoming game last week, uh, a very emotional scene for him with a lot on the line. Tate completing 62% of his passes, has five touchdown passes on the season against three interceptions. First down and 10, Nick Wilson in the backfield beside Tate. Tate looks one way, comes back the other way, and fires incomplete. Intended for Tony Ellison. It'll be second down and 10. You know, Jonesy, you, you talked about his emotional state last week and managing the emotions. I think a lot of people just overlook how big a week that was. Mm. He did more interviews last week, more focus on the Heisman. You know, going home, playing USC, the team that recruited him but didn't offer him as a quarterback. We get a chance to see how he handles his first brush with adversity here tonight. How he bounces back from that emotional loss. On a designed run, Tate picks up about eight. Let's go downstairs to Quinn. And when you break down the film of that USC game, I think Rich Rodriguez pointed out to us, you got to get your eyes right if you're Khalil Tate. There are about five times in that game where in the run game, he didn't make the right read. Who's he reading in terms of their option? And is he making the correct decisions? Well, they made the correct decision on the last two runs, Quinn. Picks up a first down on a nice gain. Yeah, you know, and I, I think Quint a little bit, Rich Rod talked about him not letting the game come to himself. And so instead of giving the ball on the option, he took it. He wanted to make a play. You know, and that's that's forcing the issue. So he wants him to, to read the thing and make the right decision. Picked up 12 yards on that play. That's about his season average per carry. Nowhere to go on this one. Seemed to be a little miscommunication on the potential handoff. And Smith makes the tackle for Oregon State. That's going to be a loss of one on the play. Yeah, this is a busted play from turns around. Nobody's there. <laughs> hey, <laughs> nobody was there. A lot of times he can. Make lemons out of lemonade out of lemons, though. Wasn't able to that time. Hands it off on second down to Nick Wilson, one of 21 seniors playing their final home game. He picks up about three. Now, this is a good third down to gauge Tate's emotions. You know, last week he was off. He didn't have that touch throwing early in the game. His first throw tonight, touch was off. So let's see if, is he hyped up? Does he have control of his emotions? Will he? Will he put the ball where he needs to on this third down? Third down and eight. Tate buying a little bit of time. Going to take off, get the first down, and tiptoes all the way down to the 30-yard line. To have a quarterback that can do that for you is a real luxury, Rod. He gets 22. Well, it also demoralizes the defense. You have great coverage. You know, you think you have a pretty good pass rush. You have him contained. There is no containing him when he can just juke a guy, get to the outside, as he does Smith their Q. That's pretty phenomenal. Rod, can you actually play man coverage against him on a third and long? Oh, because when he gets out of the pocket, look out. You're right. He's gone. Tate over the middle. Complete. Caught by Johnson. And it's first and goal Wildcats. That is nice touch. I'd say his emotions are... In check. Watch this feathery throw over the middle. Nice. A little bit of a jump for Johnson, but not out of his range. That was a really nice throw. First and goal, Arizona. Tate hands it off. Wilson just shy of the end zone by mere inches. Nick Wilson out of Fresno, California, makes it second and goal. They're going to set up quick and try and go quick on him. And touchdown, Wildcats, Wilson. Well, Wilson's a little bit of a bigger back on his last 
home game here in Tucson for the Wildcats. Graduating senior gets into the end zone. A nice thing for a guy who's been, you know, banged up a little bit in his career. Yeah, had some injury issues after a good start his freshman year. Things uh, got a little bit sidetracked for him. His fourth rushing touchdown of the season. The extra point is good. An impressive drive by the Wildcats to start this game off. Back here in Tucson, Arizona, Oregon State finds itself down seven to nothing. That's interim head coach Corey Hall, former defensive backs coach, took over midway through the season when the team was one and four. And uh, he faces an uphill climb here tonight under some very adverse circumstances. Tyler and Pierce back deep for Oregon State. Pierce on the return. Garrett's in the quarterback, hands it off to Pierce. Artavis Pierce. Think, on the first think about what he's addressing with this team. They have been working since August. They got one victory to show for it. And he knows that for the last three weeks, he's had these guys buying into what he's, but what, what he's selling, but they haven't won. He knows they need a win. And he wants it tonight to give them some hope, give them something. One and eight overall, 0 oh and six in conference play. Daryl Garrett's in the quarterback, out of the shotgun. Garrettson, and that's going to be caught for a first down to Isaiah Hodgins. A gain of 14. Nice looking pass and catch. How about laying out here and getting this thing? That's nice. Knee inbounds. He's got control of that. That is a catch. Nice throw away from everybody by Garrettson. 24th catch of the season for Hodgins. time on the running play that was Ryan Null losing four yards well Derek Garrettson the starting quarterback a six-foot senior out of Chandler Arizona took over as the starter midway through the season his uncle and grandfather both NBA officials his late grandfather the late Daryl Garrettson And that one batted down by number 26, Anthony Pendy. That Arizona defense uh, a little bit salty after last week against USC, but a great play here. Now you want to make sure this is not a backwards pass. Rolling on the field is a forward and incomplete pass. You know, if, if that had been a backwards pass, it would be live, but they ruled it was a forward pass. And every play is reviewed, as we know, up in the booth. Third and 19. This is avoid the mistake, the big mistake, because the deep passing game is not what they have. Garrettson over the middle, overshot his intended receiver and Timmy for Hernandez. And it's a quick uh, three and out after that first down, actually. Fourth and 19 coming up, and in comes Nick Porbeski. Can you imagine what it must feel like if you're an Oregon State player and you've worked since August and you have no conference wins to show for it. That would be uh, really tough to get excited at this point of the season uh, when you think about what you might or might not be playing for. To have your head coach leave in the middle of the season. Ellison with a fair catch on the 39 yard punt. But it's Coach Hall's crew now. Back to Tucson and uh, Rod Khalil Tate uh, seems to be on his game here early. What was the uh, key on that last touchdown? Well, this is a good start for Arizona, Arizona fans. Look at the middle of the field wide open. They had trouble last week against USC getting that. They weren't able to do that. This time what they have is the middle open, quarters coverage for run support, 
and also for pass coverage outside middles open Tate finds it that was the key play that led to the touchdown they get to the line quick handed off to Wilson and Wilson brought down a little bit shy of the 40 by Jonathan Willis stop the run take away the best weapon that the offense has that's where you begin on defense that's that's your starting point and the best weapon is Tate it's the same thing right yeah you take away his rushing ability yeah. and force them to do something else to play left-handed Tate gonna keep it found the seam and got the first down into Oregon State territory at the 47 a good block along the ride by Nick Wilson Tate picks up 13 and one of the neat things that Rich Rod is doing is making sure that he's got an extra blocker for Tate they're pulling guys and using a tight end getting someone out in front of him for a little extra support there is first down and 10 from the 47 JJ Taylor in the backfield but this is going to be the Khalil Tate show once again down to the 39 goes Tate and we're talking about coach Hall having a little bit of giddy up look at that stride Rod. yeah Fl very fluid yeah he looks like he can go you know the issue when you start to get older isn't the, isn't the stride <laughs> what is it's it? the change of direction <laughs> so he's good as long as it's a straight line when you start changing direction you go oh did I just pull that groin <laughs> Tate hands it off to Wilson into the secondary that's Taylor still on the loose Taylor still on his feet and finally brought down at the 11. J.J. Taylor complimenting Nick Wilson with a nice run of 29 yards. He's only five foot six and sometimes get lost inside. And he's on you so quickly, people don't realize it, but he's by you. Great balance, explosive quickness. Here he is again. Taylor rocked after a gain of about four by Hongaloo. You realize that Tate is already approaching 100 yards rushing in this first quarter? Wow. Pile up quickly. You think about his debut against Colorado the first week of October, filling in when Brandon Dawkins got hurt. He ran for a quarterback record 327 yards in that game. He hands it off here for an easy touchdown. Zach Green. The eighth rushing touchdown of the season for Zach Green. And it's not even close, Jonesy. They are just running it down their throats. A little cross blocking there. Huge hole runs through a tackle. Zach Green in standing out. This has been way too easy yeah. for Arizona. Green ran right through the arms of Hungalu, who is this week's defensive player of the week in the Pac-12. Made 20 tackles last week, but not that time on Zach Green what he's at 96 yards in the first quarter 96 in the first quarter this is a 400 yard night for him yeah, it could be if it is yeah. hey he's, he's back in that Heisman discussion I I'm surprised that he isn't in it already despite the poor week that he had last week against USC and I say poor poor by his standards well, Alabama could have made it one and two getting knocked off Georgia got drilled by Auburn Hand off to Ryan Null, and Null picks up about six on the play, and that's probably going to be the last play of the first quarter. Just remember, chaos is not a pit. Chaos is a ladder, and we've had chaos today, and who's going to climb out of it? You know, I love it when you get eloquent on me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Second and two coming up. That's the end of the first quarter. Rod, Rod Gilmore, give me some of that Stanford. It's just Game of Thrones, man. Come on. Intellectual brutality. They Game used of that Thrones. last night. Not Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome everyone back to ESPN College Football presented by Geico. Arizona Wildcats leading Oregon State on Veterans Day weekend as we salute the troops and special shout out to all our soldiers, all the men and women, the brave ones that have worked and served tirelessly to protect our freedoms abroad and here at home run on the play to Ryan Nall. a special shout out to uh, my late uh, cousin Carl Jones who served back in 
Vietnam back in the day, my cousin and uh, my cousin Janice, also a service member. They're the real heroes. Third down and two. This is really a time for them to use more of the power rushing attack. A couple tight ends. We saw them on a third and one try and throw it deep and not get anything out of it. I think their front is big enough to, to run the ball. Little pressure coming, and it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. That's Luca Bruno, one of the 21 seniors in action here tonight, playing his final home game. Got his hands up and batted it down, Rod. Yeah, Garrettson, not the tallest quarterback, listed at six feet. Get those arms up. Those windows, those passing lanes close pretty quickly. You know, Luca Bruno, number 60, is one of the guys that Coach Rodriguez talked about that was one of the people that really bought in quickly. Marcel Yates, actually, the defensive coordinator, talked about his effort immediately upon meeting him. And the punt comes down at the 22-yard line to Shun Brown. A 38-yard punt, first and 10 for Khalil Tate when we return. Tremendous enthusiasm by the interim head coach, Coach Hall. After Gary Anderson and the school mutually agreed to part ways several weeks ago, Tate completes the pass to his receiver, Tyrell Johnson. I want to go back to what we just heard. You know, he fired his troops up. His team needs something good to happen, and they need to stop Arizona from running the ball on them. I, I sort of feel like after all these players have been through, they're kind of hanging by a thread. Yeah. That's a tough situation, the run by Nick Wilson. Of course, as you look towards the future, Rod, uh, you know, Oregon State in the coaching search business now, and he's one of the guys. Well, and for three or four weeks, these players have bought into what he's been selling. They played better, but they don't have a win. You need a tangible result to keep them hanging in there and believing. And right now, they're trying to avoid a knockout punch from Arizona. Second and four. On the reverse, it's Johnson. And Johnson put his hat down to pick up the first down, Q. Yeah, in talking to folks around the program and around the school, that they kind of feel that they've got to win two of the last three for Coach Hall to be given serious consideration. But they also said that the effort that this team has shown, like worst case scenario, the, the next head coach would be smart to include him on the staff, probably as a defensive coordinator. So, so this has definitely improved his uh, basically his status. J.J. Taylor with a three-yard gain. And, uh, yeah, you know, you, you speak to Coach Holland. His present position means a lot to him. He said that he's making good on a promise that these players, these student-athletes, these kids are handled properly and making sure that they still enjoy football. And this can be a grind, Rod, when, like yeah. you said, you're 1-8, 0-6 oh in conference play. To motivate those kids is, is a task. On the run, this is Nick Wilson out in the open field, and there at first down to the 28-yard line, shredding that Beaver defense, a 23-yard gain. Yeah, the, you know, they're short a guy in run support here. Two blockers pulled out in front. You don't have enough defenders. You don't have safety down in the box. They get blocked, and they're off to the races. You know, when, when a team is running the ball on you like this, you just have to say no. No, you'll throw it, but we're going to we'll bring guys up. Wilson again broke a tackle and made it down to the 21 yard line. I, I want to go back to the point that you made about these guys working hard and needing something positive. It's not just that, that they're losing. It's that a coach quit on them. A coach left in the middle of the year and didn't explain it to him. Uh, that's kind of wild and strange when you think about the financial implications of that too. Aiden with the tackle on the play on on Wilson and uh, that that's got to make the players feel a little bit Look, slighted we, we had players tell us this week they're confused they don't know what happened they don't know why the coach left they think he's a good guy but all of a sudden he's gone no one's explained to them exactly what the deal was yeah. with it just that midseason he's gone third and one Zach Green behind quarterback Khalil Tate Tate keeps it, picks up the first down. Oh, Tate oh. Dick. Oh. 
You just watched the quarterback look up a defensive back and smack him. Watch him lower the shoulder. Bam. Get off me. I got places to go. Well, it's funny because Rick, Rich Rodriguez told us as far as tape goes with respect to running through tacklers, he says, hey, if it's a linebacker or defensive lineman, you need to get down. If the safety's too big, I want you to get down. <laughs> if it's one of those little DBs, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> At 215 pounds, you know, with, with that thickness that he has, that thick physique, he can lower the boom and look at him just run through it. It is the Tate Show. I'm coming back for more. You should too. Look at some of the brave men and women from around the world supporting their Oregon State colors and sporting their colors. Today we honor all of America's heroes who have served and are currently serving in our nation's armed forces. Salute, including one of our guys on the crew here, Buck Jordan. We'd be lost yeah. without Buck up oh, here. Oh, man. Wouldn't sound as good, look nearly as good. He's got one of the hardest jobs here. As he said, it's a good matchup against this smallish Arizona defense. They run it again. This is Thomas Tyner with a nice gain of about seven on the play. And that's one thing about Corey Hall. He is a hard-nosed, tough kind of guy. You know, former defensive back. Guy who's been coaching here at yeah. Oregon State since 2016. And they recognize him as a leader who could help pull these guys together. He told them right off the bat. He says, look, you've been through a lot. I'm here for you. This is all about you, and it's your team. I will do what you need. It's not about me. And they're going to line up in the Wildcat again. Ryan Nall, the junior running back, taking the direct snap. A little counter move. That time, no gain on the play. Well read by the defensive front, Tony Fields there, to make the tackle cue. Yeah, Ryan Nall is a junior, as you said, but he's set to graduate in December. And he's got all kinds of decisions to, to look forward to. Does he declare for the NFL draft? Does he come back to Oregon State? Or does he transfer elsewhere? I think he has a career in the NFL. And scouts I've talked to think that he's a fullback in the NFL, just doesn't know it yet. Yeah, and I would agree with that. 237 pounds, 6'2". Played an eight game so far this year, six starts. Garrettson keeps it, sprints up the middle for the first down at the 48 and into Arizona territory for one of the few times here tonight. Decisive. No hesitation, Jonesy. Watch how quickly he figures his eyes. He says, nope, I'm going to go get that first down. Yeah, he brings that to the table, some mobility, the short passing game, but that, those decisive decisions. He doesn't waste any time with it, and it helps his team. Look at Garrettson's numbers. Oregon State looking for its first conference win of the season. They're 0-6. Null again this time, nowhere to go. Seems like a long time ago, Rod, uh, that Mike Riley was the head coach, and Oregon State was going to bowl games. Dennis Erickson had some very, very productive years at Oregon State as well. And the big pitcher, uh, Corey Hall, hoping to get that thing started again. Look, it's been a long time since you had the glory days for, you know, the Beavers back when Chad Ochilcinco was roaming in secondaries, wreaking havoc, knocking off Notre Dame in a fiesta bowl. Yeah. Second 11, a bunch of names have been rumored for the job as Nall is brought down after a one-yard gain by Derek Bowles. Uh, Rick Neuheisel, one of the names that has come up. Les Miles. See, these were the Halcyon days. Mm. You know, and they were they were scoring lots of points, and Dennis Erickson had it rolling. But times have changed. A lot's changed in those 15 years. Third down and ten. Four minutes to go in the first half. Little blitz coming by the Wildcats. And Garrison sacked at the 45 by Colin Schooler. How about the effort by Schooler? 
He's on the ground. He's only a freshman, but, but you love the intensity and the effort. Watch him keep crawling to make this play. He's down, but I'm still making this tackle. That's awesome. Yeah, from Dana Point, California, played his high school football against Sam Darnold. Actually had a pick six against him in high school that Darnold was telling us about last week when we did the Arizona-USC game. Fourth down coming up. Horebski punting from his own 34. Shun Brown calling for the fair catch at the 15-yard line where it'll be first down and 10 after the 40-yard effort. Back after this. The Miami Hurricanes are lit. That turnover chain has been around a lot of necks tonight. J.J. Taylor on the run, and uh, the Canes, number seven going into the night. They won't be after this. No doubt. They're going to wind up somewhere in that top four. I I'm going to have them in my top four. You knock off number three and dominate them. Yeah, Miami's moving way yeah. up. Yeah, it's 41-8 to eight right now down at uh, Hard Rock Stadium. They are waxing Notre Dame. Taylor on the loose. It's a foot race to the end zone. Taylor tried to swerve left and was taken down by Wetzel. They are crushing them inside. They've run inside all night. You'll see it right here. He gets through it. And you think five foot six, not an inside runner, but he does a great job getting in there. 56 yard run for Taylor. He has run the ball very well inside all night long. Boy, pretty good nights. 100 stats, 100 yards already. Wilson in for him now. And Wilson picked up about a yard on the play. You know, it's the worst thing as a defensive player when a team just runs it down your throat. I mean, at this point, I, I would even leave the wide receivers uncovered and put 11 guys oh, really? in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're not going to run. I don't care. Yeah. Let's see if you can throw it, but you're not going to run on me anymore. Well, Khalil Tate has already gone over 100 yards rushing, and uh, so is Taylor. Well, they're, they're approaching 300 yards rushing in the first half. And Nick Wilson in the backfield. They hand it off on the reverse to Ellison. Ellison on the move. He'll score a touchdown. You know, Jonesy, this, this play was actually defended well schematically, but Ellison took away the scheme. How so? 27-yard well, run. He took the contained guy and made him lose some laundry out there <laughs> and got to the edge, just juked him out of his shoes. The extra point good, 28 to nothing. And right now, they are pitching a shutout. Let's head to the studio for our halftime report. Halftime here, 28 0. I'm Mark Jones alongside Rod Gilmore. Quinn Kessnick down on the field joining us in just a moment. Rod, what has to happen here in the second half? Well, some things are pretty obvious. This, the Arizona team is playing great football, particularly running the football. So you think in terms of what you need to do in the second half for this. Arizona, it's pretty simple. More Tate. You know, he handed the ball off in the second quarter. And if you're Oregon State, commit whatever you need to to stop the run. That was our planning for success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Let's go downstairs to Quinn. Our, our players are fully invested, and we're going to add more bodies to the box to stop the run. The words of Corey Hall, a former executive producer in Hollywood of movies and let me tell you if this was a movie right now this is like the low point where nobody in the audience thinks they thinks they can turn things around yeah well let's uh for his sake hope that the script turns their fortunes around a bunch here Quint here in the second half they'll start with the football here in the third quarter from the 35 Ryan Null Pounding away between the tackles, picks up about four on the play. So he didn't produce horror flicks. He he, he did other stuff, right? I mean, yes. like, I'm assuming, you know, maybe romantic comedies, maybe thrillers, something like that, you know? Uh, um, I Do, I Did okay. was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, restraining Order was the other one. Wasn't Robin Givens in one of his yes. movies? Yes, yes. 
Her mother wasn't. Second and six. Garretson completes the pass to Hernandez. Hernandez has been one of his favorite targets tonight. And he fought off a tackle close to the first down, gain a six. Yeah, nice throw. He good protection here. Look at this. You get a couple of these. You mix in some running. You keep Tate on the sideline. Get a get a score. You get a little momentum. You start to feel a little better about yourself if you can get that yeah. going. Well, we heard the passionate intonations of the head coach Corey Hall prior to the game inside the locker room and on the field. You can bet at halftime he got them all amped up again. Nall straight ahead, pounding, picks up about four. So here's the issue, Jonesy. You know, you pumped them up at the beginning of the game. And you're 28 nothing. I mean, emotionally, you put everything into it. How do you keep them hanging in there? This this team has played well for him. They played better under him than they did under Anderson. You can see that by these numbers. Look look at that point differential. They were losing by 32 points a game, and then they battled a bunch of games. You don't want to lose them now, so you have to find a way to be competitive and have some success in the second half. It's about finishing for them. This is number four, Thomas Tyner. Almost broke loose and like that tripped and but another first down and it's not just the yards It's the way Tyner runs this look at this. It's a physical run Shoulder in finishing the run trying to get extra yards. That's the kind of play he wants That's the kind of energy you need in the second half to keep guys believing that not only is he the right guy But they're getting something positive out of this first and 15 Nice hole and this is Tyner again. Another impressive burst and run. Got back a good bit of that yardage, feeling good enough to start bumping his gums a little bit with the defensive back there in the area. Actually, that's Tony Fields, number one. And man, Coach Hall is a portrait of enthusiasm and activity. Very loquacious on that sideline. And how about the wow. tap on the helmet for Tyner? Wow. You're bringing it. That's the way to go. He wants to see that action. He'll give him the ball some more tonight. Second down and five. After that 10-yard run. This is Nall. Got the first down. Broke another tackle at the 20-yard line. Rod, they are running guys over that time. Jarius Wallace felt the wrath of Ryan Nall. Well, it all began with Tyner's physical runs. Now you have Nall finishing a run. Watch this. Yeah, he finishes a run there, too. Now, have the Arizona players dialed it back a little bit, been a little bit comfortable with a big lead? If so, they will quickly get adjusted because two players out there for Oregon State are running yeah. like there is no tomorrow. That 16-yarder was their longest play of the night. First and 10, Garrettson. Hands it off again. No, nowhere to go. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Derek Bowles, the transfer from Boise State a couple of years ago, right there on your screen, making the tackle. Transfer to Coffeyville Community College and then on his way to Arizona. A little help from Luca Bruno, number 60, yeah. also in there. When, when those two guys are tag teaming inside, it's been difficult for Oregon State yeah. to run inside. Two big guys, but there's been a little bit of success for the Beavers tonight. At least this third quarter. Already more rushing yards in this quarter than they had all of the first half. Nall again. Got down to the 15 yard line. Third down coming up for the Beavers. Are you treating this as, as four down territory? Yeah. Down 28 nothing. Yeah. You're looking for your first conference win? Absolutely. It's, it's really kind of, you know, the attitude. You got a couple guys who are running over players now. Something you didn't see in the first half. Keep feeding that attitude. Third down and six. Billerman split wide to the top of your screen. They're three of eight on third down. Hawkins in motion. Garrett's in off balance. Is it caught? Touchdown, Beavers! Wow, what a grab in traffic by Tongi. Tongi Ai. And Noah Tongi Ai fought for that ball. And I think he caught it on the second bat. Yeah, it wasn't clean. Wow. He gets it the second time over Wallace. 
into the end zone now. Make no mistake about what we've seen on this drive. We saw this Oregon State team come out with some fight, with some hard running. We saw a guy make a play on the goal line to get them in the end zone. You know, this is energy that we've seen the last three or four weeks out of them on tape, and it wasn't there in the first half. It is there right now. Well, one thing's for sure, Rod, and you pointed it out. You allude to it. They haven't taken their foot off the goal. They haven't let go of the rope, and it would be easy to do that coming in here at 0-6 in conference play. One and eight overall, and it starts at the top. Tongiai with the catch and the touchdown. Boy, the rushing numbers have really flipped for Oregon State here in the second half. And, uh, Bright Ogwebu's presence impacts Arizona's ability to run the football. They're going to run it here on first down. Nick Wilson, Ogwebu, number one right there on your screen, was not able to play in the first half due to the a targeting call against him last week against Cal and uh, he's one of their most dynamic players on that side of the ball. Yeah 6'2", 235, athletic, aggressive. He's a guy that could help them but they need more than him. They need to commit to stopping the run. Second and six. Tate. Tate in a foot race. The Ghost Desert. Touchdown! Wow! He got ghost in a hurry. 71 yards. Just shot out of a cannon. Yeah, they've run so well with that zone read. He's got more quickness than you can handle with, you know, Shamar Smith over there, 41, trying to keep him inside. No way. And no one's catching him. I mean, mm. we talked about his ability to run over people. How about that speed? Unbelievable giddy up for the Desert Ghosts, as they call him here in Tucson. Oh! You know, Q kills it every weekend when we're together Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in the gym. And uh, there we go, Q on first and ten. Nice run between the tackles by Pierce. Hey, what about that core machine, that space age thing they had you in, too? Well, we may show that. It left a mark because I'm a little sore. <laughs> but it's the all core 360, and they strap you in this chair and basically tilt you backwards and then circle you like you're a human skewer. And you have to maintain a, a, a right angle, basically, with your core, and, and it gets the stomach, the obliques, the lower back. Ridiculous workout. I was sweating profusely after two rotations. How do those how do those abs feel? Do <laughs> right now. This is Pierce. The Rock abs. Down. The abs are good today. The lower back. You know, w w when they face you forward, your lower back gets uh, tensed up pretty good. Oh, so this was uh, what you had in the aftermath of all that. Q, you're you're lying down by the whirlpool. Got your feet in there and uh, trying to stretch out the lower back. And you look spent. You look. You, you put it. You left it all out in the. Uh, the concussion protocol in the, the the core chair. It was a rough Friday while, while you were eating Cliff Bars <laughs> and drinking espresso by the truck. Garrettson on the play action, taking a shot, and overshoots his receiver on the post. That was Jordan Villman, guarded by Jace Whitaker, defending on the play. When, when they had Q flipping around like a, uh, on a skewer? Yeah. That was interesting. I can see where that's that's hard. You were thinking barbecue sauce. Huh? <laughs> throw, throw a little bit on him. <laughs> Low fire. <laughs> Tell you, I, I don't know that there's a sideline analyst reporter like Quint that gets in his physical activity with the storytelling as great as he does. That was amazing stuff. On the run, no. Got the first down at the 21 yard line. Just shy of the red zone. Nice little counter. They pull one of their backside linemen and their tight end. Watch him lead this play back around to the left side. You get Nall in behind them. And you know they've had a nice little drive. And that offensive line has been kind of overlooked in this second half. And you know the left guard number 63, Lavaca, has had a tremendous second half. He's been pulling, he's been pounding inside, and they've run his way an awful lot. Now they're running that, they're winning that battle up front. 16 yards on the last one. First and 10 from the 22. And all again, a gaping hole over the right side, still on his feet. 
puts his hat down and makes it to the eight yard line. First and goal, Oregon State. Dane Cruikshank finally made the tackle, but not after Null picked up 14. Look, they found a bit of an identity in the second half. Be physical, run at this Arizona defense, an Arizona defense that has played, you know, well throughout this ball game. But now Oregon State has gone at them. They said, we've got a line that's bigger. We've got a 240-pound running back. We're going to pound you. First and goal from the eighth. And all again. So I ask you the obvious question, Rod. Where was this in the first half? Uh, well, I, I was asking for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought they came out throwing the ball a little bit. They probably wanted to loosen up Arizona, but by the time they got them loosened up, it was 21-0. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think this is more what you need to be at Oregon State. Look, it's not easy to win at Oregon State. They haven't won at Oregon State in a, in a, in a while. It's been a challenging few years. Tyner in the backfield now on second and goal. Little hesitation. Tyner lost it, but got it back and actually picked the yard up on the play. Third and goal. Whether Corey Hall becomes the next head coach here or someone else, whoever it is has to understand that Oregon State can't try and be like Oregon. They can't go with the flash and dash and whatnot. They're going to be recruiting in a different a different base. They need to be more blue collar. They need to offer something alternative, in my view, to what the Ducks do. Third and goal. Derrickson into the end zone. Caught! Touchdown, Hodgins! Wow, what a grab, and boy, Garrettson put it right where it had to be. An impressive drive by Daryl Garrettson. Left foot in, right foot in, only needs one. He gets two. Goes up. He's got a nice advantage at six foot four. Working against a five foot ten inch corner. And good job by Garrettson to put it up and let him have a shot at it. Tell you what, this is a different Oregon State team here in the third quarter. They've scored on consecutive possessions. 35-14 when we come back. Look at some of the brave men and women from around the world sporting their Wildcat colors. Today we honor all of America's heroes who have served and are currently serving in our nation's armed forces. On Veterans Day weekend. Of course, the ACC championship game is already set. When you look at Miami and Clemson going to meet there. Nice tackle and wrap up on the play by the guy we were talking about, Bright Uguebu, on J.J. Taylor. He's a young man that has traveled a lot in so many metaphorical ways. He's overcome a lot of personal tragedy and adversity. Young man from Katy, Texas, right around the Houston area. Four-yard gain on the play by J.J. Taylor. Had to sit out the first half because of that targeting penalty last week. But he's one of their better players defensively. Personable and very bright and very athletic. And, you know, they missed him in the first half of the ball game. I mean, the guy speaks three languages, Rob. Spanish, German, English. Yes, he does. Trying to spread some winning talk to his teammates right now. Tate keeps it. Boy, look at him move. He got the juice. He's got the sauce tonight. Picks up the first down. Just shy of the 20-yard line. He has just gone over 200 yards rushing. Eight-yard gain. He is the first quarterback in the Pac-12 to rush for more than 1,000 yards in a season. Mm. Nick Wilson in the backfield. Wilson on the handoff. Great spin move. Wilson down to the three-yard line. Finished off that run strong, and he put a juke on Jay Irvine, number six, for the 20-yard gain. Yeah, just a little inside running play with your tight end coming across with a good block. That was Woma, 
81 with that little, you know, inside zone play with the split zone tight end coming across, making that block, and Wilson got in behind him and ran with some authority. Boy, the senior playing his last game here at Arizona Stadium. Zach Green comes in for him beside Tate in the backfield. Green keeps it untouched. Touchdown, Wildcats. You know, Jonesy, there's a rule on defense. You got to have a guy in a gap. Every guy in a gap. No guy in a gap. Watch, watch how wide open this is. He wasn't touched. No. He wasn't breathed on. <laughs> look, look how open this is. Nobody in that gap. Nobody getting off blocks. Extra point good and Arizona 42 to 14. Touchdown run by Zach Green set up by the prior run by Nick Wilson. Wildcats looking for their seventh win of the season. They're looking to go six and two in conference play. What a bounce back year it's been for Rich Rodriguez and the Wildcats. Rich Rod will tell you the possibilities with his offense with Tate phenomenal and so they're looking at a fantastic season right now all on the run and this Arizona team one of the younger teams in the country Q yeah they have 61 freshmen or redshirt freshmen on the roster that's more than half 49 percent of their tackles this season have been made by freshmen they start four true freshmen on D with one redshirt freshman. So there's a resilience there. There's almost a naivety that goes along with being a freshman. I worry about them hitting the wall, though, but they haven't hit it yet. Yeah, don't let them know. Ignorance can be bliss when it comes to youth sometimes, and that's the end of the third quarter of play. Out of the backfield complete. Tongue eye. We'll have a first down and into Arizona territory at the 49 yard line. Good looking play to start off the quarter. Picked up 24. Yeah, he's on the left side of the formation. You'll see he'll just kind of sneak out, comes off of a potential block, and no one picks him up, and it's all along. Tongi is their leading receiver coming in this game with 26 catches. He's only a sophomore, he's from Utah. Great lead blocker this season. And he's versatile. They play him in the slot. They play him as a tight end and as an H. He's a physical runner. He's been a bright spot. Mm. Gerritsen going up top. Caught but out of bounds, incomplete. That's Villeman, one of their tall receivers. Hodgins on the other side at 6 4. This is Villeman, though. Not, not close. Good call. Good catch. Not even close to being in bounds. Second and 20. Oregon State one and eight on the year. Only win coming against Portland State. Thomas Tyner in the backfield. That pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. Got to be the third or fourth yeah. ball we've seen batted down. Tony Fields got a hand up and knocked it down that time. Yeah. So my, my, my question for you and Q about this Oregon State program is, you know, you see this one batted down. How difficult is it going to be for Oregon State to get back? You know, recruiting isn't great in the state of Oregon. There are not a lot of players that right. come out each year, and those that do come out are typically stolen by some of the more elite schools. It, it's not an easy job. Yeah. Gets to the point where you really got to. Uh, I'm thinking you work the JC route a little bit and supplement it and piece it together with other recruits. Out of the backfield, this is Thomas Tyner. Tough running. And Tyner gets down to the 32, picked up nine. Q? Yeah, you look at their incoming class of 2018, and if it's going to stay intact right now they have 14 commits half of from the state of california seven from california and three from oregon the state of oregon produces about 10 division one players a year and you know with the, if the ducks get it rolling with willie taggart how many of those can the beavers claim so i i think whoever they hire as head coach has to be able to recruit california and the pacific northwest uh 
Utah, Seattle area. Garrison found a nice seam and laid it in there perfect for Noah Tongiai. Well, Tongiai is having a great second half. He's taking some shots, but watch him hang in there. Nose is coming, caught a touchdown pass in a very similar fashion. Taking a hit, hanging on to the football. Like the energy, like the fact that this team has not quit on Corey Hall. Arizona's made it really difficult on them offensively. Almost 500 yeah. yards of rushing offense for Arizona. On first and 10, Garrison into the end zone. Touchdown, Beavers! Hernandez again, who's been his favorite target tonight. Gotta love the way they played here in the second half. Hey, Jonesy, just a throwback here. Watch this. You'll see the crossing route. They'll roll that way and then come back and throw it over in the corner. Garrettson does completely all alone. Timmy Hernandez. And for Hernandez, that's his second touchdown of the season. Third of his career. And it's 42 to 21. The Beavers on the night of trying to look for small victories doing well here in the third quarter. Boy, what a night by Khalil Tate. Arguably the hottest quarterback in college football going back to October 1st. You see what he's done tonight running yeah. the football, Rod. That's something, huh? Took a little break in the second and third quarter. Still not a lot of rushes, but big yards. And he's at 206 for the night rushing already. And I don't think he's done. Well, you know, he's so exciting. You like to see him on if you're a football fan. You want to see him as much as you can. And well, the helmet's off, but he's got the helmet in his hand. Remember, he took off, took over for Brandon Dawkins when Dawkins was injured in that Colorado game. And uh, Johnson will take a knee. It'll come back out first and 10 from the 25. And we're going to get a look at Brandon Dawkins, who used to be the starting quarterback as of six weeks ago when he was injured on a late hit in that Colorado game. And coach looked at Khalil Tate and said, grab your helmet, get in. And he hasn't come out since, but there's the numbers on Dawkins, a six foot three inch, 210 pound junior from Oxford, California. Nick Wilson in the backfield beside him. His first appearance since October 7th. Dawkins on the run. And he picks up a first down. And Rod, how tough is it going to be realistically for Brandon Dawkins? How does Dawkins get that job back? Or is it is that is he he's number two now, right? That, that ship has sailed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to hear it from you. Arizona. <laughs> Dawkins hands it off. They keep it on the ground. Taylor. J.J. Taylor breaking a couple of tackles down to the 29. We've seen this over the years with Rich Rod's offense. Pull a couple of guys, one being the tight end. Let your five foot six inch back get in behind him. They can't see him. He picks up good yardage and away he goes. You know, Rich Rodriguez doesn't get enough credit for changing college football with this entire offense's zone read concept. When he brought that into the game, the game changed. A real uh, offensive guru. Going back to his days at uh, West Virginia, and even prior to that, Nick Wilson on the run. Rod, this is senior day. 21 seniors playing their final home game here at Arizona Stadium, and we watched the parents and the players come out onto the field prior to the kick here tonight. What, what, what kind of emotions do you experience on senior night? Well, it, it didn't seem to bother the Arizona <laughs> players tonight, but typically, you know, you, you see mom and dad, and, you know, you get a little emotional and worked up, and it's hard to refocus on the game, and it takes you a while. We had a Dak Prescott game a couple years ago, and he was right. lost for the first quarter. Yeah. But Arizona put it aside and played lights out from the very beginning. Yeah, great focus by the Wildcats. Second and five. Dawkins keeps it. 
Inside the 10, it'll be first and goal for the Wildcats. You know, I saw a few tears down. I saw so many tears on the field. I thought Tom Rinaldi was here yeah. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you notice that Rich Rod's wife, Rita, gives every senior a, a graduating gift. She gives them, you know, what is it, the her the special nachos, nacho yeah. sauce that she makes. Great mix. And she's done that for years. I was hoping that uh, an extra helping or serving might have made it up to the booth. Zach Green in the backfield with 8.06 to go in the fourth quarter. First and goal. This is Zach Green, held to little or no gain. Speaking of those nachos, not your average nachos. There's a look at the players holding theirs. Yep, got a bag, yep. You think in all the years that she's done that, you think there's been one player who said, uh, sorry, Mrs. Mar Rodriguez, <laughs> I'm not really a nacho fan. It's not my thing. Yeah, you might be after you try, though. <laughs> yeah. No, they, the players are awfully excited about it. Yeah, great to... Uh, Spent some time visiting with her last week when they made the trip to Los Angeles and we called that USC game. And Raquel, Coach Rodriguez's daughter too, is also a, a cheerleader here at Arizona. Nick Wilson down to the four yard line. There's a look at Raquel. It's a senior as well. She's still going full tilt down there, Rod, with 7.05 to go. This thing apparently on ice. Come on, she's a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't, you don't cheer for three you, you, quarters. You can't pull up? No. Even, okay. <laughs> Until it, even when it I'll hits be, zero, you're cheering afterwards. Yeah, I'm looking for someone to sub me out a little bit. There's Rhett Rodriguez, coach's son, backup quarterback here. Football and family affair here in Tucson with the Rodriguez's. Dawkins waltzes into the end zone for the score. Nice series for Brandon Dawkins to get back onto the field for the first time in a little over a month. It, it won't be a record-setting night for the Arizona offense rushing the ball, but they're at 511 yards rushing. It started early, and it hasn't changed. They have dominated Oregon State up front. This ties a school record for them. Well on their way. Wow. Good way to send off 21 seniors here in their last home game. So you were saying earlier, Rod, you, you figure that it's Alabama at one. Yep. Clemson at two. Yeah. Miami. I, for me, Clemson would be two. Yeah. Miami at three or four. I got Miami at three. After what Miami did to Notre Dame. Right. I, I got to put him at three. I mean, Oklahoma, I think, moves up. You know, let me just say this one thing about Oklahoma. I, I keep hearing a lot of our friends and colleagues talk about Oklahoma defense, defense. Look, that's part of the beauty of different styles mm. and different conferences. That may be the best offense we've seen in years. Mm. And wouldn't you like to see it match up against Alabama or Clemson? That'd be great, yeah. So you're basically saying, as the caught, catch made by Billman, that an offense like Oklahoma's regardless of what defenses seem to be in the Big 12 conference, could be a problem for some of the better defenses. The, the beauty of college football is that we have so many different styles. And so why not celebrate that? And let's not penalize Oklahoma because they're different from an Alabama or Georgia. I mean, nobody complains when, you know, LSU and Alabama play 7-7 and say horrible offense, let's get rid of them. Yeah, great point. This is null on the run, eh? And one team that was not in your top four there, there's an undefeated team in the Big Ten, Wisconsin. Right, right. What, what do you make of their case? Well, they have an opportunity ahead of themselves to continue to win and to beat some teams, including in the Big Ten championship game, that will help them. But right now, their schedule, in my view, isn't worthy of putting them in the top four. Good team. They, yeah. they, they worked Iowa today. Second and five. And all again, yes. <laughs> I mean, do, where, where, where do you stand on this? I mean, am I wrong moving Miami up? No, you think I, I'm wrong with Oklahoma I, moving up? I, I like the I like the Hurricanes as, as high as even number two. Um, I, I can live with them at number three. Um, Clemson, I think, is where they should be. Alabama obviously moves up to number one. 
Uh, I'm not crazy about uh, Oklahoma uh, being at number four because of their loss to Iowa State, which now seems to be discounted a little bit because Iowa State has lost a, a, a few, albeit they're a top 25 team going into the rankings this week. This is Pierce. Q, what's your take, Q? Well, Miami may have been most impressive today, but Auburn now can't be ignored. Uh, and, and their Iron Bowl game against Alabama is basically a de facto quarterfinal game for the college football playoff. Winner would go on to the SEC championship to play Georgia. So Auburn's very much in the mix, Rod. True? Yeah, you know, Q, hold on. The Auburn SEC, is a two-loss team already. The SEC is wide open. We saw Auburn and Georgia today, our pals. You know, Brad Nessler and Gary Daniels had that one today, and they're going to have another good one. Don't don't count it out yet. Auburn or Alabama, that's still that's still an issue. Fourth down, the Beavers going for it. And a first down catch by Hodgins. Imagine a scenario under which Alabama loses to Auburn, has one loss, doesn't play in the SEC championship game, but still gets put into the final four playoff just like Ohio State did a couple Ooh. years ago. Controversially so. Imagine that. <laughs> well, last year she said, yeah. Could happen. Yeah. Auburn's two losses coming against, what, LSU and against Clemson, right? Both on the road. Garrison incompleted the 16 and with 333 to go. Boy, has a lot changed since those initial rankings came out huh? Uh, and and maybe back to the same of one and two Alabama yeah. Clemson but you know the committee has shown over the years yet the first three years no appetite for a two loss team mm. might this be the the year that changes I don't know we'll see second down and ten You can see the college football playoff reveal exclusively on ESPN Tuesday night. In between those basketball games, it started at 7 o'clock. Garrison out of the backfield to Null. Null made a great move, hit him with the sauce. Oh, oh touchdown, Beavers. 44 yards for a very impressive Ryan Null. Partner, we've seen no quit in Oregon State tonight. Even being down, looked like he almost stepped out of bounds there, I suppose. But uh, but Null showing you some speed for a guy who's 240 pounds. But this team hasn't quit under Corey Hall. And, and that whatever, says a lot about Coach Hall, right? Whatever he said to them at halftime yeah. to get them to play in the second half is remarkable. It would have been very easy for them to let go of the rope. And they trail by 21 points with 3.22 to go. Looking for that bounce. And hey, Oregon State's going to have the football at the 44. It bounced off of an Arizona player and into the arms of the Beavers. Well executed. Should have been recovered, but the hustle to be in position to come up with that. Yeah, Adam so Sosman. Yeah. Was that the ball was touched by the receiving team, recovered by the kicking team. First down, Oregon State. Well, you gotta love the enthusiasm of Corey Hall. First and 10, 319 to go. Oregon State back with the football. Garrettson under pressure and sacked. Back at the 36-yard line by Kalen Wilburn. Rod, I want to get back to what we were talking about, the coaching vacancies. And, and it's, it's so odd this year to see Florida struggling the way that they have. And you look at the success of the other teams in that state. Miami going to be in the top four, according to your call this coming Tuesday. Um, USF, Central Florida, Central Florida, Florida Scott yeah. Frost doing a great job. Yeah. Well, Scott Frost might be one of the guys mm -hmm. on the move. Second and 18. Garretson intercepted by Lorenzo Burns. And Burns is all about that action right now. Brought down at the 49 yard line. 
This is a terrific job by Burns. He was charged with covering the deep third on the outside to the left. Played it perfectly. Watched the quarterback. Watched the ball. Showed good hands. And then thinks immediately about sudden change and how to get back up the field. That's a tremendous job. Look at this catch. Thank Never you. in my life. That's awesome. <laughs> So for him, you can't say there's a reason he's playing defense, right? Because he looked like a wide receiver on that. Remember, oh, Burns uh, had an interception a couple of weeks ago in their win against Washington State. Two twenty-two to go. Zach Werlinger in a quarterback now, taking over from Brandon Dawkins. Nice cut and move by the four-string tailback, Brandon Leon. So we know that Khalil Tate is done for the night. More than a couple hundred yards rushing for yeah. him. He will probably pick up some Heisman votes this coming week, at least in our internal poll. I'm surprised he's not in the top five already. Well, he's at six. He fell off because of the USC game when they lost that game. But that's USC. Understood. Okay. But I, I think one thing is, if you're talking about who deserves an invite to New York right now, You'd say certainly Mayfield, Love, and Tate. Okay. Those three deserve an invite. Who wins it? Different story. This is Nick Wilson. 136 to go. Khalil Tate. His work done on the sidelines the rest of the night. Look, they were projected to win three games yeah. this season, and there was some talk about whether Rich Rod's seat was hot and now they're looking at maybe eight wins maybe nine wins at premier bowl game and Rich Rod is certainly the toast of the town when it comes to running this Wildcat program things change quickly because of Khalil Tate in part you got it well, slowed earlier in the season and uh, not quite performing the way in practice that coach Rodriguez wanted him to this is Nathan Tilford with his first carry of the night. Under a minute to go here in Arizona. Up comfortably. This one is cooked, glazed, and ready to be sliced. Little Tate out of Inglewood, California. 528 rushing yards tonight for the Arizona Wildcats. Third and two. That was Whirlinger again on the tackle. Pardon me, on the carry. And that's going to do it. Arizona's going to win it 49 28. Tate going over 200 yards rushing on the night. And threw it well when he had to. Rodriguez improved to 7 and 3 on the season, 6 and 2 in conference play. Second place. In the Pac-12 South, Arizona had three 100-yard rushers for Rod Gilmore and Quinn Kessenick. I'm Mark Jones. Thanks for watching from Tucson. Right now, we're going to send it to College Football Final.